stuff there in the BC band about uh, fake uh, ICOM radios. Hey, I'm Steve. Uh, hello, everyone. KC3AZT uh, for your tip of the day on uh, October the 7th. It's uh, a little after 12 a.m. here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, to, this evening I encountered, and I was reading up on a few posts on the uh, 4 page, uh, with um, some posts maybe about like sluggish radios or, uh, you know, radios that start um, kind of locking up, and, you, you know, you would see the S-meter freeze and maybe the band scope or something, or... Uh, somewhere within the radio, something's not working correctly. Well, this evening I uh, kind of came across uh, a scenario with another computer uh, that when I went to uh, turn any of my rotatable, you know, uh, knobs, being volume, power, mic, RF gain, or VOX, that I was running into a scenario of I would hold down the left click of the mouse and I would start you know, turning right, and the knob would start responding, but very, very slowly. So for like every, you know, two turns, the knob would maybe go about a quarter of the way. So um, what I did was basically uh, I shut down Handsphere, okay, which we're going to do now. And I'm going to walk you through uh, a few things that... Uh, we may try to first off uh, possibly alleviate uh, that it might be an issue pertaining to the Hamsphere 4.0 program. Kelly is coming out with a new version pretty soon. And, um, you know, doing it this way, you're sort of uh, alleviating and eliminating um, more possible uh, problems that could be coming from your side. But just to be safe, um, I think I'll go through this right now. So first off, we want to uh, delete uh, all of our temporary uh, Java files. So on Windows 7, uh, you would go down to your little icon here. You're going to click on that, and you're going to type in Java. And you'll see some stuff for Java come up here. I'm not going to do it now bef because of uh, other programs I don't want to be advertising. So you'll see uh, something come up saying, you know, Java configuration. You need to click on Java configuration. And this will bring this box up. And you can drag the box around on the screen. Here it is, dead center. Um, on Windows 8, however, if you go into the bottom left, I believe, uh, you'll have uh, application or apps or apps that will pop up on the screen and you look for search, which is up towards the top left, and you put in there Java, and you're gonna to wanna to find, um, you know, what uh, Java you're running. But Windows 7 is pretty, pretty easy. The first thing you wanna do is go to update. We're gonna click on update. Although it says here, check updates automatically, uh, we're gonna do it nevertheless. Okay, so uh, we're gonna click on update, and your computer, will determine. You might get uh, user account control thing to come up to say yes, which you can't see here in the recorder. So it says you already have the latest Java platform on this system, so that's good. Um, however, if you hit, you know, update now, then if you have the Internet Explorer pops up and it takes you to the Java download page, it's saying that you do not have the latest version of Java installed on your computer. 
Now you do want to check your uh, Java versions that you have. You should have the latest, which is like seven point. I I, I forget to be honest with you. Um, I can find that out in a couple minutes, but you should only. Have one version of Java. If you go into uh, your computer, uh, click on uh, C drive, into your C drive, and then look for a uh, program files times 86. Search for Java. Everything should be in alphabetical order. When you see the Java folder, open that up, and you should only have one version of Java. If you see other older versions of Java, especially Java 6, you need to get rid of it. Java 6 apparently had a lot of problems in the past, and I noticed a lot of computers it's still floating around, believe it or not. So you want to get rid of that old Java and update to the latest Java. And when you go to the website, also, you can go to uh, uh, Google, checkmyjava.com. It'll bring up um, numerous websites. You want to go to the original website where you see uh, that it is a Java website, okay? And then check your Java manually that way also through Internet Explorer. I recommend you use the factory installed Internet Explorer on your computer. So uh, after we uh, determine that we have the latest Java, we can go to back to general. And then we're going to click on left click on settings. It's going to bring up a second box. Don't touch anything here. Leave everything like it is. Go to delete files, left click on that, third box comes up. So we want to delete all three of these. You got one, two will automatically come up. The installed applications and applets or applets, let's go ahead and click that and then hit OK. At this point in time, um, a lot of people rush. They're in a rush. They're like, come on, I want to get, I don't have time. You know, I can't. Um, stress it any anymore you have to wait and be very very patient you see how that box just disappeared on its own I did not click anything so the uh, temporary files within Java are automatically deleted and Java is back pretty much being uh, freshly installed if you will then you can simply hit OK and OK here and that's it you're done you're good with your Java so you just uh, alleviated one strong possibility hamsphere 4.0 runs sort of runs along with java it's not ran by java it's not a draw a java driven program whereas hamsphere 3.0 is a java driven program however the procedure you just did there will um uh, make the hamsphere 3.0 run uh, most efficient okay so the second point of the video we just did that uh, Java we're good on that let's go to the second portion of the video I like to cover the icon and I kind of name my icon different here don't worry don't rename your icon you only should have one single icon um, however I, I get I have a tendency to get lost a lot so I have to <laughs> pretty much customize all my stuff so here on the screen, this is a shortcut. This is your green Hamster 4.0 icon. Um, if, again, if you're having problems of any kind to eliminate and alleviate any possibilities that the computer, it could be on the computer side, we're gonna do these three procedures. Okay, number one, we just covered Java. Number two, we're gonna go into the icon. Simply hover over the icon and you kinda of wanna you know, left click once to say to, to the icon, you know, hey, I'm here, I want to do something. So at this point, we're going to right click on the icon. We're going to left click on properties. Now, this procedure is in the owner's manual. Uh, what we're going to do is run the uh, Hamster 4.0 as administrator of the computer. So we're going to go into shortcut Okay, that's a shortcut, it should automatically come up. Go into advanced, left click on that, second box pops up. 
Okay, so at this point, you will see that the run, on, run as administrator is not clicked. Go ahead and click it. Hit OK. Left click OK. Come down here. Left click. Apply. Okay. So there you have it. You just change the, how the icon opens. It's going to open as administrator mode. So let's do that again. Run as administrator. Click that. Okay. Hit apply. Bang. Okay. Then just simply hit okay. So when you double click on your icon, you'll get the uh, message from your computer saying, you know, do you want to allow the following program from an unknown publisher to make changes to this computer? Hit yes, which I'm not going to do that right now. So there we go. We covered step two. Now let's get into step three. Come down to your time. This is a biggie. On a lot of computers so far, I help uh, uh, you know users out getting everything's figured out. A lot of times, I'll find major major problems within the time. The computer's time very important and very essential. It runs all all of your programs, including you know Windows updates. The whole nine yards runs on a time clock. It's like the heart of a computer. So um, Ham's here. 4.0, Kelly made it very uh, flexible as far as time, but just to cover the basis that you know that you do have your time set correctly, uh, we are going to come down to the right bottom, left click on time, and go ahead and change date and time, click on that, let me drag the box down a little bit, and here we go, so we're at date and time. First thing you want to do is go to Internet Time, left click on that. Um, so I just synchronized this clock, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Internet Time, you're going to go to Change Settings. And it's at this point, and if you read the box what comes up, it you should have this uh, checked. If you don't, you want to check it. So it's saying that the computer will synchronize with an Internet Time server. So depending on where you are in the world, I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, here in the United States uh, with Windows, mostly everybody will see the following. Okay, all of these are different time. Uh, they're almost like servers, if you will. Imagine it as a server. So the computer's connecting to the server and it's being linked up with time, right down to the little second. Very, very important. Um, just in case to cover all bases you want to hit update now now i'm trying to update now uh oh wait it did do it okay so there you go the clock was successful successfully synchronized with time.windows.com on 10 7 14 at 12 23 a.m so there you go i just uh basically updated my time and it's good you're good to go hit okay don't touch nothing if you do have problems with uh, your time, you can, okay, you can go on the change settings and scroll down instead of windows.com or wherever you are in the world. Look for the next one. Try whatever's available. It could be the server, the way the computer is hooked up to that particular server might be going through a different set of lines. You don't know. It's The, the internet is just a, a super wonder. So try a different server. Then after you click on a different server, okay, then hit update now, which I'm not going to do that. So try that. And then after it's successfully updated, hit okay. And then that's pretty much it. Additional clocks. This is another biggie. Um, uh, a couple people um, did have extra clocks. So extra clocks is all well and good, but however, uh, for any type of VOIP programs or um, you know SDR professional programs such as 4.0, I would not recommend having additional clocks. You only need one basic clock. However, you can, I believe, get um, different programs that will download separate clocks, like world clocks that will be located on your computer around the world and UTC time. You can do that, okay? But do not, I would not recommend you do it this way. Um, that's my personal recommendation. So after we're done with the internet time, we're good on that, hit okay. And that's it. You just covered three major um,
kind of you know uh, structures that 4.0 depends on after you cover all three of these and you boot up the 4.0 see how it performs it, uh, it should perform much better uh, however if you're still encountering any kind of problems then obviously you want to uh, let it known being on the FB page or through uh, a, a support ticket through Hamster. And uh, that should be it. I think I covered everything. Thank you very much for viewing. 73.